Welcome to video 15 of Gamer to Game Developer Series 1, and this video is about construction block removal. So the objectives for this video is first we'll set up all the game objects and build and run the game so that we can see how the system works. Then I'll discuss the three scripts that are involved, which is the server removes construction block script, construction block asks to remove itself script, and the fire block eraser script. And then finally, we'll update the blaster script so that it recognizes blocks. So let's describe how this system works. So the player, they have a new weapon called the fire block eraser, well, the block eraser. And when they're facing a block and they're within range of that block, a ray, well, a line will be drawn from them to that block and that indicates to the player that that block that they're facing can be removed and they're within range. So then when the player left clicks their weapon, so they just left click and they've activated the block eraser weapon, the fire block eraser script will tell the construction block asked to remove itself script, which is attached to that construction block that they're looking at, that it has been hit and is to be destroyed. So now that construction block, its script, the construction block asked to remove itself script, will now send a message to the server removes construction block script, which is on the server while it's run by the server. Now the name of the block is supplied. If you remember from our previous video, every block that gets instantiated is instantiated across the network with a unique name, which is just the name like construction block one, two, three, four, five, etc. but it is a unique name. So the server removes construction block script on the block manager, in the block manager on the server, will be supplied with that name of the block and that it's supposed to remove the block. So then that script will then destroy the block across the network. So it's quite a simple system. And the very first thing that we need to do is to just set up all the game objects and then we'll build and run to see how the system works. And then I'll explain how the scripts work. All right, let's set up our game objects. So I'll start with the server removes construction block script. So this one is attached to the block manager and it'll be in our list of scripts and I see it right here, server removes construction block. So I'll just drag it in. Okay, so the block manager is taken care of. Now the next thing is the construction block prefab itself. So let's go over to that. And to this we need to add the construction block asks to remove itself script, which is right here. So I'll just drag that in. And now we need to set up the fire block eraser script. So it's going to be attached to its own game object. And that game object is going to get placed inside each of the players. So I'll create a new empty game object. So create empty, I'll reset it. And then I'll change its name to block eraser. I'll attach a network view, so component miscellaneous network view. And I'll set it so that it's not observing anything and there's no synchronization. So off and observe nothing. Okay. And then next, I'll attach our script to it. I'll attach here the fire block eraser script. So I'll just go back to the block eraser and just drag this script in. Okay. Now we need to attach this game object to our players. So what I'll do is I'll first duplicate this block eraser since I'll use one for the red player and one for the blue player. And what I'll do is I'll grab the blue player and just drag them into the hierarchy. Okay. I'll note the position of the blue player. So it's position at X0, Y0.5, Z0. So I'll bump up the block erasers to Y0.5. So it's going to sit right inside the player. So the line that the player is going to see 
get drawn from them to the construction block will look like it's coming out of the middle of them about. And I'll do that for the, for the other one as well. Okay, and now I'll just drop this into the player. Yes, continue, we're losing the original prefab, yes. And now let's save the changes to our prefab, so just hit apply. Okay, and our blue player has now been updated to include the block eraser, so let's delete them from the hierarchy. Now let's repeat for the red player. So I'll drag them in. I'll note their position. It's exactly the same as the blue player's position. So that means I can just drag the block eraser, the other one, right into the red player. Yes, continue. And apply the changes. And that should be it. And I can delete this red player. Now, if everything's all right, I should be able to build and run. So let's give it a shot. So file, build and run. Okay, and I'll set up a server here and run it from here so I'll be able to see any errors better. I'll just pick the red team. Okay, so let's put a block down. Okay, so it looks like the fire block eraser is properly drawing the beam. Just let me remove the stats panel and I'll return back. All right, so we can see that our fire block eraser is the one that's drawing this beam. And the beam is telling us that we are within range of a construction block. And if we left click now, we'll be able to remove the construction block. Of course, our blaster is also going to fire as well. So it have two weapons going off at once. Now, in a future video, actually very soon, we're going to have weapon options. So that's probably after the next video. So we'll have weapon options and we can select which weapon. So then both weapons won't be going at the same time. So let's left click. And yes, we can see that our block eraser is working and the construction block is getting removed. So what's happening? The fire block eraser is the one drawing this beam, this line from us to the construction block to indicate that we are within range of the block. See, if I'm further away from the block, it won't draw anymore. Once I'm close enough and I'm actually looking at a block, the beam will draw itself and it'll be touching the block. So it'll mean then that if I left click, now the fire block eraser, when I left click, it will send a signal to that construction block and it'll tell its script, the construction block asked to remove itself script, that it has been hit and that it needs to remove itself across the network. So it, in turn, the construction block asked to remove itself script on that construction block will now send out a signal to the server removes construction block script on the block manager and then that script on the server, so the server removes construction block script, will then remove this construction block across the network. So the server is the one taking care of block removal. So it's pretty much just like how when the player was requesting to place a block, it's a similar thing, that the player is pretty much requesting that such and such block should get removed. And it's the server who is the one who actually removes that block. All right, so you can easily see that that's working. And that's it, it's very simple. So now we'll move on to the next step where we'll actually go ahead and talk about how these scripts work. And I'll start with the last script in the chain, which is the server removes construction block script. And I'll just disconnect and I'll connect with the blue player and just check that it's all working. And yes, it is. So that means for the red player and the blue player, our script is functioning correctly. And I've set up the game objects correctly. Okay, so I'll stop playing now and move on to the next step. We're on to step two of five, where we'll discuss the server removes construction block script. Okay, let's open up the server removes construction block script. 
And this script is the last script in the chain. And it is a pretty simple script. So I've just expanded the comments here. And in the summary, all it's saying is that this script is attached to the block manager and it only executes on the server when it is given the positive signal for destroy signal. So this Boolean is set to true and the name of a construction block to remove. Okay, so let's have a look at the variables. There are only two. And the first one is a Boolean called destroy signal. And this signal is set, this Boolean is set by the construction block asked to remove itself script. So when a construction block is hit, its script will then access this script and set the destroy signal to true. And once the destroy signal is true, then this script knows that it needs to carry out the destruction of the blocks within this list. Now you'll notice this list has the type string and I've just called it destroyed construction blocks. And this list simply holds the names of the construction blocks that need to get destroyed. And the reason that we're using a list is so that way we can destroy multiple construction blocks in a go. So for example, if a rocket hits a bunch of construction blocks, the rocket is area of effect, so it'll destroy multiple construction blocks in one hit. So by using a list, we're able to capture all of those blocks that need to get destroyed. They'll all be sending a signal to the server, to this script, and they'll all be trying to tell the script that, oh, I need to get removed, uh, this is my name and remove me. Now, if we didn't use a list, then only the last one or maybe the first one and only one of them will get their signal through to this script that they are to get destroyed and only one block would get destroyed when actually a whole bunch should get destroyed. So by using a list, we can quite easily capture a whole bunch of them at the same time and then go through the list and then just destroy each one. If the network type is not disconnected, so we only run this code when the player is actually connected to the game or the server is actually connected and has a server running. And the reason for that is if we didn't, then RPCs might try to get sent if for any reason that this destroy signal was set to true. And so we just simply put that check in and that keeps that from happening. And otherwise we'd just have errors. All right, so once destroy signal is true, it'll have been set to that by a construction block that has been hit. And those construction blocks, their script that we're about to see, are also only running on the server. So we'll see that in a moment. Now, if destroyed signal is true, then quite simply, we go through this list of destroyed construction blocks and we fire off an RPC to destroy each block in that list. And after we've carried out this bit of code, this sending off these RPCs, we set this destroy signal to false and we clear this list so that it can be used again. So let's have a look at this RPC here. All it's doing is it needs the name of the block to remove. We create this um, variable go standing for game object on the fly. And all we do is find that block by its name. So we find that game object by its name and then we destroy it. So this RPC will run on the server and all of the players. So this script across the entire network will then run this function and destroy the block which has that name specified. And it'll do that for each block in the list. So very simple. Okay, so that's it for this script. So now we'll go to the next step where we'll talk about the construction block asked to remove itself script. We're on to step three now, which is to discuss the construction block asked to remove itself script. All right, let's have a look at the construction block asked to remove itself script. And I'll expand the comments. And as we can see, it's a really simple script. And now this script only runs on the server. And let's have a look at the description. So this script is attached to every construction block. And it is the one that tells the server removes construction block script. 
the name of the construction block to remove. That's the one that this script is attached to. And it sets that destroy signal to true. Now, this script is accessed by the fire block eraser script when the block has been struck by the block eraser. Now that script, what it does is it sends an RPC to the server to this construction block on the server. And it's the server then who is running this script to actually tell the server removes construction block script the name of the block to remove. And this is a nice clean way of having only the server remove and deal with the removal of the construction block. Now, of course, there's going to be some delay for players with a bit of a high ping. There will be some delay before they see the block removed. It would have been pretty easy to set up the code so that they see the block get removed instantly. But it's a matter of choice because you can think about it. Enemy players would be standing on a block. And regardless if, if in our game we destroyed the block from underneath their feet and would of course expect them to fall through, fall to the ground. But that won't happen if we were destroying the block instantaneously in our game because there's a certain amount of lag if we have a high ping connection. So in this, in this respect, it's better to just have the server carry out the removal of the construction block across the network. So everyone gets a true picture of what's happening at nearly close enough about the same time, nearly about the same time. Okay, so let's go through the script. There's only one variable, and that's a Boolean called I am hit. And this Boolean is set by the fire block eraser script. If that script, when the player strikes this block with their block eraser weapon, that weapon will then send an RPC to the server to this construction block on the server and its script and set this Boolean to true. Very simple. And then all it's going to do now in the update function is that this script is only ever going to run on the server and what it just simply does is that if I am hit is true, then all we do is we run this function called delete box. And all this function requires is the name of this block. And we can just say game object dot name because that's the name of the block that this script is attached to. And once we run the function, then just set I am hit to false. Okay, so let's have a look at the function itself. And this function, all it does is it supplies that server removes construction block script with the unique name of this block and a positive signal that it is to be destroyed. So yep, as we saw, it requires a string, the name of the block. All it'll do then is find the block manager, access the server removes construction block script, and then add to the list in that script it'll just add to that list the name of this block and it'll set destroy signal to true so now you can imagine if a rocket had hit a bunch of blocks they'd all be running their own version they'd be all running this script on their own block each block will be accessing the block manager and each block will be adding itself to that list. Now, if those blocks are doing it at exactly the same time, then the list will be able to capture the name of each of those blocks and then be able to send out the signal to destroy each of those blocks. And that is the reason why we are using a list. You could use an array as well, but you wouldn't use just a single variable in this case that can't hold more than one item because if you did that, then only one of those blocks would get removed when multiple blocks have been struck at exactly the same moment or almost exactly the same moment. Okay, so that was it. It's very simple, the script. We'll now move on to the next step where we'll talk about the fire block eraser script. We're on to step four of five now, which is to discuss the fire block eraser script. Okay, let's open up the fire block eraser script. Now this script, as you recall, 
is attached to a game object called the block eraser, that's what we named it, that we had attached to both players. And it allows them to fire a ray that destroys blocks. Well, it's not actually the ray that's destroying the block. The ray is just signaling. It, it's the one that detects which block the player is trying to remove. And then once it's done that, it then accesses the construction block asked to remove itself script and pretty much tells that script that that block has been hit. So it sets I am hit to true. And once I am hit is true, that very construction block then sends its own signal to the server removes construction block script to get rid of itself across the network. Okay, so let's go through the variables. So the first two is fire rate and next fire. So that's, as you remember, just like in the blaster script, well, the fire blaster script, it's used to control the rate of fire. So if we didn't have this, when the player presses left click, they'd be able to just erase the massive number of blocks in a short duration. So we simply put this fire rate on so they can't do that. Next, we just have some quick references pretty much, which is my transform, camera head transform. And then we have two vector threes. One is the line origin and one is the hit position. So this is used to draw that purpley line that we could see coming from the player to that construction block, letting them know that they're within range of that block. And then we have two more variables. This is just used for the ray cast. So the ray cast hit and the range. We've seen this many times. And then we have two other different variables. So these are color ones. So we have here private color C1 magenta and C2 magenta. You could just have, uh, you could actually have like two colors for the same line. So that's why we have a C1, C2. And you can just change that to whatever color you wish. So we can go through that and we'll see how it works. So we go to our start function where we set that my transform is equal to transform.parent because remember this block eraser, fire block eraser script is attached to a game object called block eraser, which is the child of our player. So that's why we say transform.parent. And of course we know the camera head, which we just say is my transform. So the parent dot find child camera head. And we use the camera head as the direction for our ray to get fired from. All right, so now we are attaching. So this line render, we're going to attach by code, we're going to attach a line renderer component, which will then give that visual effect for the block eraser. And of course, only our player is able to see it. This, this script is only running on our player and it's not something that's happening across the network. And it's only for us anyway, so that we can tell that we're within range of a block. All right, so then we say line renderer is equal to game object. So the very game object that this script is attached to, which is the block eraser. So we add that component, a line renderer component. Then we say that the line renderer dot material, we're going to give it a new material and its shader type is particles additive. That's why it has that um, transparent sort of appearance and it looks a bit bright as well. Then we say line renderer dot set colors and here we have C1, C2. And C1 and C2 is the starting color and the finishing color. So you can set them to whatever or you can just set them to be the same color like I've done right now. Okay, then I set the width, the starting width of the line renderer of that line and the end width. So it starts off a little wider at 0 0.04 meters and then it ends at a finer point. So it looks like it's moving. Otherwise you'd have this, it'd still look fine. You could do it that way, but that with a point, it looks like it's then touching the block. Then we set the start and end position. So you'll notice that what we've done is the first thing that we did was we added the line renderer component to our block eraser game object. Then we set the material for that line renderer. Then we set the colors for that line renderer. Then we set the width of the line, the starting and the end width. Then we set the vertex 
count, so the start and end position. Now with the vertex count, you can increase that more than two, so you could specify whatever number you wanted. If you had, say for example, a vertex count of 10, it has, let me think about that, so it probably has 10 dots on it, and that would probably mean nine lines, I'm imagining. And you could then change, you could then specify the position of each vertex. So then you can have a line that's not necessarily straight. So you could have your line do other things. Well, I guess whatever you're thinking of. But in my case, I just need a simple line that starts from a beginning position and going to an end position, which is the block. So I simply have a vertex count of two. It's just a plain line. It's just one line with two points, a start and end. All right, so now we've set up our line renderer component and it's attached to the block eraser game object, which is itself attached to the player. Now we can go to the update function. So when the cursor is locked, a ray is going to be cast ahead continuously. Oh, and later on we'll have another here, we'll have a state where if this is not the selected weapon, then of course the rest of the script is not going to run. But at the moment we don't have weapon selection. That's soon, after the next video or so, we'll have weapon selection. And then we'll be able to choose the block eraser as a, as a weapon. And then when that's true, then this script will continue running this code in the update function. All right, so when our condition in the if statement is true, then a ray is cast ahead continuously and it checks the tag of any object hit. If it is a block, then the line renderer is drawn from the player's position to the point where the ray hits the block. And I'll probably just fix that there, just write then a line, yep. Okay, so what we have here is if physics dot raycast, so starting from the camera head position and in the same direction that the camera head is facing, so I say dot forward, of course we want to return, we want to know what was hit and the range of that ray and that what that is what limits our uh, range of our block eraser weapon, so the ray of that line as well, when we're not in range, sorry, then of course the line is not drawn. All right, now if the ray is hitting a recognized tag and that tag is construction block, then the start and end positions for the beam are set. So our line origin is equal to our camera head transform dot transform point. So we're saying a position just in front of the camera head transform. And of course, you remember we use transform point because we want it to be relative to the camera head. We want that position relative to the camera head. And this is the easiest way to capture a position relative to something. You use transform point. Okay, then we say hit position. So that's the ending position for our line is going to be hit dot point wherever it hits on that construction block. Okay, now, well, this was true anyway, that there is a block in front of the player. So draw the beam, yes, because of course this ray has hit something and we're continuing with this code. And what we do, we then set that line render dot enabled, we set it to true. So now the line renderer is going to draw and we set its position. You'll note here zero, we're saying here a zero, that's the index. This is the first vertex count. So the first part of the line, our line is one segment only and it's made of, of course, two points to define that line. So it starts with zero and the vertex position, the position of vertex count zero is line origin, which is pretty much a position just in front of our camera head transform. And then we set the other vertex count, the next one, to hit position. So it, the line, the ending position for the line is going to be hit position, which is that hit dot point. Okay. So now our line is being drawn. So that's what we want. Now it's waiting to see another condition. So now if the player 
presses their left click, which is the fire weapon button. And of course, we're checking that we're checking the fire rate. So the time dot time is greater than next fire. So we have a fire rate that way. And if the player presses left click, then of course, next fire is equal to time dot time plus fire rate. And as you remember, from our fire blaster script, all this is doing is it's taking the current time, adding this fire rate, which I believe was 0 0.5. Yes, it's 0 0.5. So it adds that to time.time .time and sets that as next fire. So the player will be probably holding, they might be holding down their left click. So time.time .time is not going to be greater than next fire until that time, you know, it counts up. Since time.time .time plus fire rate, so for example, I've explained this before, but let's say for example that the time right now is five seconds and we have fire rate 0 0.5, so next, five is, next fire is going to be 5.5 seconds. Now if this update function is running again, and it will if the player is holding down their left click and all these conditions are true, then let's say that time.time .time is 5.1 seconds. Now that's not greater than 5.5, so of course this bit of code will not execute. It'll have to wait till it's greater than 5.5. Okay, now if the object hit is off the tag construction block, then we send an RPC to the server and inform them of inform it of the block to remove. So all we did was we just well pretty much we send this RPC to the server which finds this block on the server, accesses accesses its construction block asked to remove itself script and tells it that I am hit is true. And then the construction block will take care of the rest and remove itself. Well, it'll tell the server removes construction block script to remove it. Okay. Now you'll notice here that I'm doing a double check of the tag. So I have here construction block and then again construction block. And truth is I don't necessarily need that unless unless I have different types of blocks and I want a different RPC to get executed and to access a different script. So that's why I have this check here. This later on will have an air block and it'll have its own RPC and its own set of scripts that work for it. Okay, now if this if this condition isn't true, if this bit here where the tag is not of the type construction block, so else if the tag of the object hit is not a block, then disable the line renderer. Well, it's more like the line renderer is kept disabled or if the line renderer was enabled because the player was looking at a block and now they suddenly look away then in that case, and they're looking at something, they're looking at another object, so the ray is hitting something, maybe a tree, but it's not of the type, it's not doesn't have the tag construction block, so the line renderer gets switched off. Now we have another else statement pretty much, and this one is that if the ray just doesn't hit anything, then just keep that line renderer disabled. And then finally, we have another one, which is that if the cursor is not locked, then keep the line renderer disabled. And we actually need each of these checks because if you can imagine that if the player was looking at a block and then they press the escape key to access the menu or they wanted to type a message, the, that beam would still get drawn. So by simply having this else statement here, it gets disabled. And as I mentioned the other one, that we have this one here, that if the ray doesn't hit anything, because let's say for example, uh, the ray is hitting something and the line render was enabled at that time, then this bit here might not get executed. And in that case, then the line render is going to be enabled. So you can try that out. And by doing these three else statements, we always, we, we, well, we only have the line render enabled exactly when it should be. So there's no misleading 
information about telling the player that they might be able to remove something when they actually can't. Okay, so now let's have a look at that RPC that gets sent. And remember, it's only to the server. And it's saying, tell server, it's called tell server construction block is hit. And all it does is it finds that block by its name. So this RPC, it gets sent to the server. And this script, this very script on the server is then going to run this RPC. And it requires a string, the block name. And that is supplied when we run this RPC. We say we send it only to the server and we supply to this RPC the name of the block, which is that hit.transform.name. And then this script is then going to find that block and then it's going to access the script on that block and then tell it that I am hit is true and it only runs on the server. Okay. So that's it. That's pretty much it for the fire block eraser script. It's pretty simple as well. Just, I guess, a fair bit of... Well, actually, no, it's not that much code either. It's pretty simple. As as I was just mentioning as well, that this RPC is just sent from this script to the server, and this script on this player in the server is then just going to run this function, access that construction block asked to remove itself script on that block, set I am hit to true. So then on this script, the I am hit is true and it's only running on the server. It'll then run this function to delete this box called delete box and it requires the game object. It supplies this game object dot name and that's what this script is attached to and that function will then find the block manager, access the server removes construction block script, tell it the name of the block to remove and set the destroy signal to true. And by telling it that script what to remove, it's of course adding it to that list. So if we go to that script now, we have this destroy signal set to true, and it's only running when the game's not disconnected. And it just goes through the list, runs this RPC, and destroys the block across the network. So it's just a three stage process. Stage one is we have the fire block eraser script. When it's activated, when the player wants to destroy a block, they left click, it sends a signal, then it sends an RPC then to the block on the server that it is hit. And once this block knows that it is hit, It'll then access this server removes construction block script and add itself to this list and set the signal to true. And then, of course, it sends out an RPC back to everyone that this block is to be destroyed. So it is it is quite a simple process. It's just three stages to it. And it's a neat way for having the server take care of removing the construction blocks. Okay. So that is the main bit of this um, video. The next step is to simply just make our blaster recognize when it hits a block. So the blaster at the moment is just flying through blocks. So we'll just change that. It's pretty easy. And we'll move on to the next step for that. All right, we're on to our very last step, which is to make that blaster script recognize blocks. I'll open up the blaster script and make a really simple change to it. So now let's scroll down, down, down. All right. This is the place and all we're going to do is add another or. So you can see here that if the blaster projectile is this blaster script is attached to the blaster projectile and all it's doing is if it's ray that it was casting has hit a tag which is blue team trigger or red team trigger which you remember is attached to the players now if it's done that then it's going to run all this code now all we're going to do is just add another or here that hit dot transform dot tag is equal to construction block 
then of course I have to make sure that that spelling is correct and that is it so I'll just save that and let's have a look at it so what we what will happen is if it hits a block it expanded is going to get set to true then an explosion effect that little blaster explosion effect gets instantiated and then the projectile becomes invisible and we turn off that light, which is what we see glowing around the blaster projectile. And that's very, very simple, as you can see. And that's it, actually. And the truth is I could have even added it up here, but it really doesn't matter. Actually, when I look at it, I can see that this code can be simplified even further if I simply just took hit.transform.tag is floor and just put it here. That's only a slight improvement, so I'll just leave it as it is. Okay, so I've saved it and now we should build and run to check that everything is okay. So I'll jump over to Unity, File, Build and Run. I'll set up a server with the built game and go back here to the editor and connect as a player. All right, let's set some blocks down and about. I'll zoom into the player and let's see how we go. Oh, you can see as well in the editor, you can see if you look up in the editor above that our beam is actually getting drawn. All right, well, that's because we're playing in the editor and of course, it's only visible on our own player. So on the server, the beam won't be visible. All right, now let's go back and let's shoot at that block. And we can see that our blaster is actually recognizing the block. That blaster explosion is instantiated and the blaster goes invisible and it lights, its light turns off, which means that it's working. Now let's go close. And yes, we can destroy the blocks. And if we try to click too rapidly, we'll see that the block isn't removed. And that's simply because you remember we have a fire rate for our block. Now we don't actually want to have the block eraser and the fire and the blaster going off at the same time. So in video 17, we'll have weapon options. So not the next video, the video after. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video, which is about player resource.